Live from Hollywood, California and the fabulous Pepper J Studios, we are at Actors eChat where we have had this going on for the last six years and every day we bring you a new guest and one of our celebrity guests today is someone who's been very active in theater as well as writing, producing and helping out people through philanthropic char um, different causes and uh, it's Adelia Barnes. Hey. Adelia. Hey. Thank, Thank you. you. My pleasure. Good to be here. So you're originally from Northern California area. Northern California, a little town called Oroville. Was there a lot of acting going on in Oroville? Well, I'm sure there was, but not formally. I see. So um, how did you actually get started in acting? Because that I probably wasn't the big industry there. That's correct. I okay. was 16. I was in a program called Project Upward Bound at Chico State. And it's a college preparatory program for disadvantaged youth. And uh, I took my first class the summer after my sophomore year <coughs> in high school. And the elective that I chose happened to be drama. Really? Why drama over so many other things at that time? Because it was something new, and I, I just wanted to try it and see what it was all about. And so I played the queen in The Ugly Duckling. Really? Mm -hmm. I see. Very powerful role. You had your own kingdom around you. I had my you. kingdom. It was fantastic. Do you and non-traditional casting. Uh, non-traditional casting yes, mean what? my husband what? was Anglo with dark brown hair. Our daughter it was blonde, ah. blue eyes. Her suitor was darker than me. So it was all about who the director felt was best for the role. It had nothing to do with race. So it was a very empowering way to start a story. What actor. a wonderful way to it start. It was a great introduction to Now, do you have other family members who are in the entertainment industry? Not as actors, per se. I have a nephew who is a comedian. And um, I have others who have sort of tested the waters a little bit, either as writers or others that, that you know, in other areas. But I'm the only actor. We have a question from one of our actors, each other. Oh, great. Yeah, we have an interesting question ah. from Bismarck, North Dakota. They want to know, what was it like to be designated a disadvantaged youth? Ah, that's oh. an interesting question. Uh, very very question. enlightening question. Well, in my way of thinking, I didn't really see myself as disadvantaged. Um, just like growing up as a have-not, you don't think of yourself as a have-not, you just are. And if your life is rich in so many other ways, you don't really allow those labels to impact you in a negative way. Has that um, in some ways given you an advantagement because you didn't necessarily grow up with um, what some people would have a sense of entitlement? Probably. I, I've always been appreciative of everything I've gotten because everything was so sacred that I did receive. Right. right. And you earned it. And I earned it. So from being a queen, <laughs> how did you blossom beyond that first production? Well, I continued to study and by the time that I had finished high school and Project Upward Bound for the three summers that I was in the program, I then went on to UC Santa Cruz and majored in theater. Mm -hmm. and continued my training there, and uh, I'm now in Los Angeles. It's interesting that there are several causes who use the terminology upward bound, like there's a, a center in Santa Monica that mm -hmm. I, I've helped out, which is to help homeless people okay. uh, upward bound, which um, is a really good cause. Okay. Um, and so it's nice to see that there are those people committed to helping others, and you've been doing that throughout your career also. You, you don't just take, you give. I feel I'm a servant. How so? Uh, meaning to say that I serve others, particularly women. Uh, women are my niche. So a lot of the work that I've done really has been centered around women, uh, having co-founded the Los Angeles Women's Theater Festival 21 years ago, having um, founded a reading circle for women, having um, founded a uh, writers Retreat, International Writers Retreat. Now for this women is the Georgia. site you're talking about for the... That's the Los Angeles Women's Theater Festival, yes. And we've produced now close to 500 solo artists from around the globe. Now when you say produce them, they're all solo performances or are they... And here's another site, which one is this? And that actually is my Writers Retreat, my Writers Well, that's in Sharpsburg, Georgia. Okay, outside of uh, Atlanta area? Outside of Atlanta. Uh -huh. So when you're talking about you've produced uh, so many artists on mm -hmm. stage, are these solo performances these are or are solo they full? No, they're solo performers and um, primarily uh, we have artists who will do an excerpt. So say the show is an hour, mm -hmm. 90 minutes, 
then they may have 30 minutes on the bill because we really are trying to have as many women in the festival as we can. So they would probably be doing an excerpt as opposed to the entire show. So is it spoken word, singing, a combination of, of both? It's all of that. So it's multicultural, it's multidisciplined. So we may have actors, we may have dancers, storytellers, performance artists, performance poets, musicians, singers, comedians, all of the above. What gave you the fire to start this? It really uh, was not something that I planned to do. I happened to have been at a conference, and that was in Pasadena 21 years ago, uh -huh. and met a woman by the name of Miriam Reed. We discovered we were kindred spirits, and that we both have solo shows where we portray historical women, mine African American, hers Anglo. And this was put on by the California Arts Council at a time when they had this roster, and if you got on the roster, you had the stamp of approval from the state of California. <laughs> so if anybody was chosen from that directory, it was felt that you would deliver, either as an individual artist right. or as a group, because the state of California had said that you were an artist that was worthy. And um, so by the end of the conference, they had everyone come together in this big room and to powwow, and they asked if there were any announcements. So Miriam had the bright idea of asking the question, Adila, what if I go up to the podium and find out if there are any other solo artists to see how collectively we might be able to support each other? I told her I thought it was a great idea. She went up, she identified me, I raised my hand, and all these women came to the rear of the room. How and exciting. That's how it all began. So it was really serendipitous. It was not something that was planned. So there wasn't like, oh, here's the foundation, no. we've got the building, no. brick and mortar. It, it was literally very organic. organically it was started. Very organic. So in the earlier days of the foundation, mm -hmm. where did you have the performances? At the place it is now, or it's evolved? We actually rotate all around the city, venues all over. Mm -hmm. Our first year, we were at the Los Angeles Theater Center, and in fact, that was the year that um, Angela Bassett was nominated for her Oscar. Oh, how so thrilling. she was our first host, actually, that very first very year. Very nice. Very nice, indeed. Now, you do a performance that's traveled, I believe, three continents. Three continents. Forty, some I'd say, 43 states? Forty. Forty. I was Ten close. More to go. Ten more to go. Ten more to go. Unless, of course, we annex a few more countries or provinces uh, <laughs> between now and then. But That's right. uh, it's a seven-person show, all performed by you. Seven women. I portray all of them. I start with Sojourner Truth. Here is. Uh, and there's Angela. it's the gorgeous shot of Angela Bassett. That's a lovely picture of her. And so, with the one-woman show, I mm -hmm. start with Sojourner Truth. I then move on to Harriet Tubman. Mary McLeod Bethune, Zora Neale Hurston, Lorraine Hansberry, Angela Davis, and Maya Angelou, who so we just lost. So, so f she'll this have is you on stage now. doing the performance? That's me as Zora Neale Hurston, that's correct. So you actually do costume changes during the show? That's right. I have a coat rack, and I go to the oh coat my. rack, and I bridge a cappella songs. That's me as Harriet Tubman. Right. And um, so I portray all of these women. It's, it's really quite an honor to wear their shoes. So for those who are not um, history buffs, if okay. you will, why did you select these particular seven figures in history? Because they all represent a different shade, a different color, part of the tapestry in different ways. For example, with Angela Davis, she came along during the time that I came along in the 60s. Mm -hmm. So she represents that whole movement in terms of black power, civil rights, um, you know, all that took place during that time. The Martin Luther King era, yes, Black Panthers, if you will. The Panthers, all of that. So I chose her because she has a political voice. On the other hand, yes, that's her with her natural. Yes. And, Love her. Um, mm hmm. And on the other hand, I chose someone like Sojourner Truth because she came along during slavery. She was an incredible woman. Was um, she part of the railroad? That was Harriet Tubman. Okay. That was Harriet Tubman. My apologies. Uh-huh. The Underground Railroad. Right. And um, so they both lived during slavery but had very different roles. Harriet Tubman, of course, being a part of the Underground Railroad. Right. Sojourner Truth being more a part of the women's movement during that time. Uh, prison rights. Um, she took two people to court, won the cases that was unheard of during that time. It so was she was amazing. also an attorney then? No, she had been a former slave, but really? she fought for her rights and won. And this is her? That's Harriet Tubman. Okay. That's Harriet Tubman. Okay. Who helped over 300 slaves escape to freedom. 
did they, it seems to me I had heard, because I'm from Michigan, that mm -hmm. part of the, the Underground Railroad ran through Chicago, Detroit That's area. Right. Okay. And on up into Canada. Uh, right. We'll be back with more. You're watching Actors E Chat. I'm Kurt Kelly. Live from Hollywood, this is Actors E Chat. I'm Kurt Kelly. Don't forget to go to our sister site, ActorsReporter.com. Click on the Actors Discounts. And when you go on that page, you'll find all the different people who have been bringing you the show for the last five years. And don't forget to like the page. Uh, six years now. Oh, time flies when we're yes, having it fun. Is. And uh, don't forget to like their pages. And when you go to their pages, put in the Actors Discount Code and get special discounts for going to their site and using their services. Adila Barnes. Yes, perfectly stated. <laughs> You're the first one I've ever met who's been Adila. Okay. It's not a common name. No, not in this part Why of the did world. your parents select it and what does it mean? Actually, it was not selected by my parents. My birth name is Lovey. Okay. And Lovey? I, Lovey. Okay. And my chosen name is Adila. It's Arabic and it means one who deals justly. So I chose it for its attribute. Really? Yes. You seem like someone who has researched a lot of history and culture. In part because of my one woman show, but also I love history. Is it part of your spirituality? I would say that, you know, just really being inquisitive about life and about people and about where we're from and mm -hmm. history is just something that I've always been attracted to. So from being the queen, how did you evolve <laughs> into professional <laughs> stage and writing and television? Okay. There was a transitional part. That's right. After I graduated from college yes. at UC Santa Cruz, I moved to the Bay Area. And that's where I got Why there? Because it wasn't far from UC Santa okay. Cruz. And also because it was a really alive area and I wanted to be a part of that area. And um, so I moved there, and that's where I got all of my union cards. And my first union card was my Screen Actors Guild card, and I got that for doing a voiceover job for nice and soft toilet paper. Nice <laughs> and soft, okay. And then, of course, got my AFTRA card, and now, of course, SAG and AFTRA have merged, so right. we're one now, we're one union. Well, and they haven't figured out the pension yet, but that's a whole other story. On. Yes, so they're working, working on it, on it. exactly. Mm -hmm. So the professional... Uh, actor part came through Screen Actors Guild before Equity then. That's right, that's right. I had my SAG card first, I had my actro, after card second, mm -hmm. and Actors Equity card I believe I got third. So for those who are wanting to follow in your footsteps, mm -hmm. Um, there's certainly a lot of states, even like Michigan, has flipped to a right to work state recently. Yes. What are your thoughts about working versus union working or not? Any, any advice to someone getting well, started? I think, first of all, anyone getting started needs to train. Oh, please. Number Even people one, who are still doing it need to train. Need to train. Absolutely. That's right. We need tune-ups as well. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would say for someone who wants to get into the business is train, train, train. Read, read, read. People that you respect in the business, if they have autobiographies or if there are biographies on them, read them. Follow their journey so that you can learn what their experiences have been and perhaps avoid some of the traps maybe that they found that they experienced or lessons that they learned so that you don't have to also experience them. And at the same time, to become inspired by all of the wonderful things that these people that you admire have been able to accomplish. So I would say train, 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 read, 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 observe, observe, observe people. How do you get over predispositions in your own mind or other people's minds when you're mm -hmm. going in for that audition so you actually get the part versus get hung up in all the minutia? Well, for me, what I do, what I like to do a lot of times when I go into audition 
is to first of all come in find a quiet spot if I see other actors I know invariably I do I'll speak to them mm -hmm. I'll excuse myself I'll find my own little spot so that I can really focus to go over what are called sides or the script that you're the pages that you're reading from right and what I also like to do is visualization so I like to visualize seeing myself walk through the door where the producers are seeing smiling faces seeing friendly faces seeing people who want to give me the job nice so that when I walk through that door it's already set up for me you've programmed the success I have programmed the success now it doesn't mean I'm gonna get the part because I also believe that if the role is for you, there is nothing that can stop you from getting it. However, mm -hmm. if that particular role has another person's name on it, it's theirs. But just as surely as it's their turn, your turn will come around again. And just to give you an aside, an, an example of that is I was working in the Bay Area. I was still living there at the time. I was an actor and an instructor at the American Conservatory Theater. And I had an audition for a movie called Kiss Shot, starring Whoopi Goldberg. Now, mm. Whoopi had moved to the Bay Area. We knew each other. We both taught at the San Francisco School of Dramatic Arts. And, in fact, she had offered me um, a role in her one-woman show because her career was taking off and she wanted to be relieved of that show. I didn't take it because she had established it. She had gotten the reviews. I didn't want to be compared to her. And Here's so I, Whoopi. That's her. Right. So I chose not to do it. However... In this instance, I had an audition, and it was during the time that we were doing A Christmas Carol at ACT. So we right. were doing like 10 shows a week. Oh. And so they had an audition time. I couldn't make it. It was in San Jose. We had a show. I couldn't do it. And so then they rescheduled and had another time for me to go down to San Jose for the audition. I had this old hoopty. It was uh, a square a back what? hoopty, a square back car, <laughs> Volkswagen. <laughs> okay. And it had problems with the fuel injectors. Ooh. So we now have my second audition time. So I get in the car. You're chugging there. I'm driving to San Jose from San Francisco, which is only about 30, 45 minutes away, and I cannot go past 25 miles oh. an hour. Wow. And it had nothing to do with rush hour traffic. No, it okay. had to do with these fuel injectors. Oh, no. So I've got to get off of the freeway, and I'm like, oh, no, this is my second chance to audition for this movie with Whoopi. So they then cast another actor who lived in the Bay Area, Marguerite Robinson. And I said, well, it was Marguerite's. Well, it wasn't Marguerite's because they changed the shooting schedule. Marguerite had a commitment in New York. Oh, my. She couldn't do it. They called me a third time. They said, Adila, can you make the audition this time? We this was the charm, actor. right? This was the charm. Okay. They said, the actor can't do it. The schedule's changed. Are you available? Right. I rented a car to drive 45 minutes away to make sure I could make it. Met with the director in the trailer. He offered the role on the spot. And Whoopi was there, actually. I saw her that day. And... I got the role. How wonderful. So it came back to me three times. So that was my role. And that kind of validates what you say. If it's it meant totally to be your valid. role, That's you'll exactly get the right. role. That's exactly we have another right. question from one of our actors, E. Chatters. Thank you so Arthur? much, Chatters. We really appreciate you. We're trying to get as many of your questions as possible. One of our Chatters asks, any audition hits? Audition tips. Nice. That's a good question. Yes, I would say first and foremost, make sure you are prepared. Go over those sides over and over and over again. And even if you have memorized your lines, keep the sides in your hands. Because if you get in that room and you freeze up and you forget and you don't have the script right there, you're in trouble. Great so advice. Yeah. So it's don't better break. to have and not use than not have and need. So yeah. that's one thing I would say. And also listen to whoever is reading with you. Listen. I believe that 80% of acting is listening. So make sure that you're listening to whoever's sitting across from you. Try to play off of them as much as you can. Usually it's a casting person. They're not actors. So they're not going to be putting a lot into it. It's all about you. And uh, so you want to listen to them and give to them as much as you can. Well, and be able to pick up if someone misses a line. That's right. I mean, that pregnant pause is sometimes very uncomfortable for yes. everyone in the room. Another question from Manichetta. Yes, Melissa, I think is from Minnesota, okay. asks, 
So maybe because you didn't grow up with all this junk that a lot of the kids have, that really made you a better artist. What do you think about that? Well, I, I tell you, I didn't have all the junk. frills and we didn't have, you know, social media. We didn't have any of that stuff when I was coming along. And so you really did have to rely on your creativity and, um, and just really go for it in terms of your training and all of the basic things that you needed to really make sure that you had in place as an artist because you didn't have the bells and whistles at that time. Well, and now there's more of an advantage because your agent or from different websites, you can download mm -hmm. the sites. There's a lot of times, I'm sure you remember, where you would walk into an audition and that's the first time you saw your lines because they didn't have a way to fax or email them to well, you know, fortunately, points. in my case, most of the time, I did actually have the sides. So I, someone yeah, delivered yeah. them or mailed yeah. them to you? Yeah, I, would ge I generally had them. So when I hear people say they have a cold read, I, I probably could count on one hand the number of times I've gone into an audition where I've really had a cold read. And in that case, usually it's been where I've went in to read for one role, get there, and they go, oh, and Adila, could you, by the way, read for this role? Mm -hmm. And then I've got a little bit of time to prepare. But for the most part, I've had my sides. Have you done a lot of commercial work, or has it I've been done, more? It's been more theatrical, but I certainly have done commercial work as well. So what was your first um, theatrical television or film? The first one was something directed by Bill Duke. And uh, we're looking now at my reel of some of my work that I've done. Mm -hmm. And but Bill Duke was my first director um, on camera. It was the Johnny Mae Gibson story. We shot it in Oakland, California. And um, was that for theatrical or for television? That was for TV. That was a made-for-TV movie. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was your first television series that you got into acting? My first TV series. Um, we're looking also at some of the other clips that I've had. Um, Do you want to explain some of these Yes, that's scenes? Iron Jawed Angels with Hilary Swank. Mm -hmm. uh, we shot that on location. That was in Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, what was your question again? Uh, well, uh, that's still Iron Jaw Angels. Yeah, what the first television series that you actually started working in? Wow, the first series. What was it? I think the one and only time that I ever did an extra role, and I earned my after card by doing it. It was a series. It was on PBS. Uh, I can't remember the name of the show, but that was the very first time that I did something on camera that was a TV show. But it was an, as an extra, and I got my card. And that is what That was my one and only time that I ever did an extra role. Really? Do you advise for people to do extra roles to I get think the foot in the door? I think it's one way to get your foot in the door. It's one way to get upgraded, perhaps, if they bump you up and you get even one line that qualifies you to be in the union. Mm -hmm. And it's also a way where you can learn what all the elements do. And this is a scene from? That's from Aaron Brockovich with Julia Roberts. Now, um, when you were... Cast sight unseen, by the I way. I was just going to say, when you were being cast for films like this, how did uh, they pick you for these roles, or how Steven did you get Steven Soderbergh actually looked at my reel and cast me from my reel. I just didn't, based I on didn't your acting performances in the reel? Yeah, I didn't meet him until I hit the set. How is it to work with um, this type of cast on this type Julia of film? Julia is wonderful. She is so professional. She's very warm. Uh, she's a little prankster. But when they call when action... When you say pricks, prankster, what do you she mean? She likes to just fool around a little bit. But when they say action, she's ready to rock and roll. Spot on. Oh, spot on, absolutely. Who are some of the exciting people you've worked with that you say, mm, if there's another thing coming up, I'm right there? Mm. Well, I really enjoyed working with Whoopi. Right. Uh, having had known her before. Uh, Danny Glover is a friend. Uh, we've known each other Amazing for like actor. 37 years. Oh, um, you guys are just getting acquainted. <laughs> <laughs> New friends. Um, what is little? What is this about? Uh, that's Ving Rhames. He and I were in a Great made for actor. TV movie for Hallmark. Mm -hmm. um, this actually was my biggest role. Um, I had like 27 scenes, fourth billing. It was nice. wonderful, just wonderful. 
and we shot that on location as well. Where was this shot? That was uh, not too far from L.A. Um, I want to say a little bit north of L.A. Gosh, this seems seems like a, a scene from a lot with the uh, the exterior here. So yeah. this is actually a small town here in yeah. Southern California? Yeah, a little north of, Cal of uh, Los Angeles. When you go to these small towns and you're doing these types of shoots, how do the local people embrace you or not? I think they're really excited. You know, you have people standing around and they're watching and they're looking and... You know, sometimes people want an autograph or they want to take a photo with you. So it's a big deal. Absolutely. It's a very big deal in small towns. What has been your biggest learning experience with all your travels? If you can say, here's something mm. I'd like to share. What, what emanates? Wow, I've learned so many things. Um, and especially going out of the country, you know, going to Nigeria, um, having taught acting there. I had an acting class that had like 100 students. And I was like... How in the heck am I going to teach 100 students? Mm -hmm. um, that's Sandra Bullock. We worked together uh, on Murder by Numbers. Um, so leaving out of the country is always interesting to me because it means that I'm in touch with people that represent different cultures and bringing my culture to other places. That's always very exciting. And a chance to appreciate what you have. That's right. We'll be back with more on Actors E Chat. I'm Kurt Kelly. The great thing about NL Media is it's a one-stop shop. We are soup to nuts. We have writers, directors, producers, animators, motion graphics artists, editors, videographers, musicians, all under one roof. And we are a boutique creative house where we actually do the creative at much more affordable price and have the staff in-house to execute it professionally. My name is John Palacio. My name is Luz Montez. My name is Paul Robinson. I am Jesse Cervantes. I'm Curtis Peel. My name is Ben Joran. One of the most common questions we have from potential clients is how does it work? What happens when you engage in now media to create a video, a marketing campaign? It first starts with, you know, obviously having the phone conversation with the client, brainstorm with them to come up with a really good concept and a really good idea to push whatever they're trying to do to the next level. Only with that in mind can we really try to tailor a concept and a script for their exact audience that fits in with their branding and the message they want to tell. We'll storyboard it out, get a real rough idea uh, of what we want to do. We'll then present the client with a couple of options, different ways that we could go with some of the things that we've come up with. And they'll say this is good and then we'll come back and we'll start animating that or designing it or editing it. Our clients are generally, you know, like to be really hands-on and we like to hear from you kind of all along the board. There's no surprises. What we like to do with every partner is we actually create a page on the NNL website so they can give feedback and that way when the time we get to the final product, you know, usually there's not a whole lot more revisions to do because they, we've already been working together the whole time. The big difference is that, that real personal creative touch. We have a creative group that can execute that vision, whether it's animation, video, motion graphics, and do so with some unique creative that is custom tailored to that business. You know, dream it up. It's video. It's magic. It can happen. Live from Hollywood, California, in year number six, this is Actors E Chat. Don't forget to go to our sister site, ActorsReporter.com, and click on the Actors Discount Codes. When you scroll up or down the page, make sure you like everyone who's there, as well as the page of the sites you're seeing this show on today. And when you put in Actors Reporter, you'll get special discounts at each one of these different people who have been bringing the show for the, I don't know, countless guests that we have had, like Adila Barnes. Now, you were on the Gilmore Girls. I was on the Gilmore Girls. Tell me about the Gilmore Girls. That was a fun show to work on, guest starring role, one episode. Mm -hmm. And um, they really move quickly on there. The director, it's interesting how different directors work. And this one particular director, he wanted to keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. Almost, almost like a daytime fast. soap or something? Well, he just really wanted the, the tempo to be really rapid. And um, so it was an interesting challenge for me as an actor because it wasn't a lot of breathing space. It was like you just wanted that temple. Mm -hmm. And so it was a good challenge because it forced me to really think quickly and move quickly. 
Have you done soaps? Because I hear soaps I've can not, be very challenging. That's the one thing I have not done. I have not done soaps, nor have I done uh, the webinars yet. But uh, other than that, pretty much everything else. Are you open to doing those if I'm someone's open. looking to cast you? I'm open. No one's asked me yet, but we'll see what okay. happens. Okay. So what is this from? And that's from The Middle, which, of course, is a very popular show that's on now. Do you and just stare at people I like that? or Late at night, okay. I, I'm seeing it all the time. I'm really? like, gosh, they, they rerun all the time, cha-ching, cha-ching. That's, uh, you know, that's the beautiful cha -ching, cha -ching. thing of the union, <laughs> the cha-ching, right. cha-ching. I've Residual. seen that with my Saturday Night Live yeah, stuff. It keeps coming back. That's right. Thank you very much, Lauren Michaels. Nice Michael surprises Dallas. when you go to the mailbox. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and the accountants like it, too, for some reason. Uh, so <laughs> um, some of the other feature work that you've done includes such a long list. Well, I've done a lot of things. Uh, I just worked on Major Crimes. Mm -hmm. And that's going to air in July of 2014. So where's uh, that airing? Uh, that's on TNT. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there was spinoff. Of you course, pretty much have done every network. I've seen you've done stuff on Quite CBS, NBC, ABC, TNT. Have you all missed the, all a network the yet? Well, I'm sure if we're talking about cable, there's some cable stations oh, okay. I haven't been on, but all the networks, absolutely. And yes. so this is the show you're talking yes, about, Major Crimes. Yes, this yes. is a new series. No, this is their third season. Okay. They're going into their spinoff. I've of watched the it so many times. Uh -huh. Mary McDonnell is uh, the lead on the okay. show, Dancing with Wolves. How do you like doing series work versus uh, feature films? I like both for different reasons. Um, I, I like working on features because it's the big screen. So when you see yourself, it's like you're huge. Epic. Right? You're epic. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, people go to the movie theaters to see the work. And uh, at the it's same time. It's an event, time, if you will. It's an event. And at the same time, I enjoy doing television because people can be in the comfort of their own homes. It's free unless they need cable right. to see the cable stations. And so it's very accessible. Television is very accessible. Well, and it gives people the flexibility to see you when it works with their schedule. That's this correct. is such a long list of credits here. Mm. Um, oh, those are my credits. Okay. Television series. Okay. Um, any favorite television series, or is that not a fair well, question? Well, I, I really enjoyed the fact that I was blessed to be on The Roseanne Show for five seasons. That was fantastic. Something that started out as a guest starring role one episode turned into five seasons. So it just goes to show you never know. How is she to work with the, uh, on the set situation? Well, you know, Roseanne, I think who she is today has evolved from where she was when we had the show. Right. And uh, that was a very tumultuous time in her life. Right. Um, however, I think she's done a lot of personal work now, and she's on a spiritual path now. So the Roseanne I worked with, if I were, were to work with her now, I think I would see a different side of her. Very elegantly put. You also are um, about to get a question from oh, an actor each great. other. Yes, our, our, we have a chatter from Las Vegas. Vegas. Hello, Nevada. They would like to know, what's been your favorite role? Wow, my favorite role. Geez, I guess if we're talking about stage, it would be my one-woman show where I have the opportunity to portray all these phenomenal powerful African-American women if we talk stage. Will that ever turn into television or film? I don't think so. You're going to leave it on stage? I think that's where it belongs. Okay. And then if we're talking about um, television, I really enjoyed working on the Hallmark movie Little John that you guys saw clips of with a little bit Bing ago Rames. with Bing Rhames. Mm -hmm. Wonderful role, family story, and a great workout having 27 scenes. And uh, if we're talking film, I guess perhaps it might be one project might be Aaron Brockovich because of its social uh, impact. Implications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. Um, now, you also are involved with the Women's th uh, Theater and you the have Los some Angeles events that Women's are coming Theater up. Festival, yes. What I'm are one some of the, of the special founders. events that are coming up? And we have two events that are coming up, uh, 2014, mm -hmm. August 23rd. We have an event called Empowerment Day. It's our second annual. It's in partnership with the Fremont Center Theater in South Pasadena. And uh, we see now the website. Mm -hmm. And we can have- Can people buy tickets on the website to the show? Yes, they can actually go there and pay their tuition there and for the one day event. And we have 25 uh, facilitators, I believe, 20 or 25 facilitators who will be coming, mm -hmm. lending their expertise, offering workshops and panels right. for solo artists, but anybody can come. Um, yes. 
Uh, <laughs> from an actress you chatter. And, yeah, so, we and we're also receiving submissions for our 22nd annual festival. So people can go to our website at www.lawtf.org to download their submission forms and also to pay their tuition to come to Empowerment. So they can be considered to be a regular performer at one of your future events? Yes, we have a screening panel that okay. screens all of the submissions, rates them, and uh, makes offers. We have a question from an each other. Yes, it's actually a question from London. Ah. They say they're coming to visit the States. Wow. Are you still doing your one woman show and where can they see a calendar when that's happening? Well, I haven't done it of late. I'm trying to retire it, but people keep asking about it, so I may have to bring it back. I've been doing it since 1990, so I've begun to think perhaps I may just pass it on to a younger actor and let the show continue to survive and thrive. And It doesn't necessarily mean that I have to do it. Right now, I'm really interested in doing more in the way of motivational speaking, um, inspirational speaking, uh, basically being a public speaker is something that interests me right now. It's amazing how you change your look for each one of those roles. Mm. Now, you're speaking about uh, gender expression and, uh, and other developmental abilities. Do you find sometimes people challenge you when you do this or are people very receptive? Challenge me in terms of... I don't know, in, in audience when you go to smaller towns or different cities, or are people really open and receptive to change? When I'm doing the one-woman show, or when I'm... When you're out doing your speaking. Oh, doing the public speaking. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't found that people have challenged me. I've found that people have really appreciated uh, what I've shared, either in terms of workshops maybe that mm -hmm. I've done, or um, keynote addresses that I've done. I think people appreciate um, receiving the knowledge, the information. Your openness. Another question from We have two questions. Show. One of our question, uh, chatters asks, so what's your favorite role in your one mo woman show? Oh, I get that question all the time. Um, I love all seven of my women. And I find that Zora Neale Hurston, however, she's bigger than life and she kind of pushes the rest of them out of the way so that she has center stage. <laughs> and I get to have more fun with her. I get to play with her more. She and has a, a bigger role. A bigger presence. Role, a she presence. has a bigger presence. Your book. Oh, yes. Before we do that, can we was it, that There was a second chatter? question, yes. Oh. They want to know, when you go and speak, what are the topics? I may speak on um, uh, inspiration. I may speak on motivation. I may speak on how to get... Uh, roadblocks out of the way in terms of moving forward with your life. Um, sort of like um, coaching, life coaching kinds of topics sometimes. And um, I also talk about acting, um, uh, my journey. I just did a talk recently where I talked about myself as an actor on my own terms, my own career. Mm -hmm. And so there may be any number of things that I talk about, but generally um, what I talk about has to do with empowerment, has to do with motivation, has to do with inspiration, has to do sometimes with my own journey. Now, are these also the same topics in your book, or does the book cover different the areas? The book starts with me at age 16, mm -hmm. up until the book was written, which was in 2008. And this is the my book. My journey, yes. And I'm very proud to say it's an Essence Magazine bestseller. In June of 2009, it was named number three behind President Obama's two books. Nice. Yes. And people can also still get it on Amazon. They can get it on Amazon. I would say go to Borders, but I haven't Borders seen that many gone. of those Borders is gone. They do a book signing there before they close. They're, okay. they're closed now. But they can also go to my website and I'll autograph it. So ah. if they come to adilabarnes.com, I prefer that they come to me to get it. One, because I will get a bigger percentage, but more so I can autograph and make it personal. So does this mean you have your own Barnes bookstore? <laughs> Sorry. No, that's that. Barnes and Noble. Yes, I know. But it's noble of you to have your own that's Barnes right. bookstore. That's right. That's what I was trying that's to right. say. Um, we'll be back with more on Actors Eat Chat in just a moment. I'm Kurt Kelly. Over her long career, Nina Fosh appeared in classic films such as Spartacus, The Ten Commandments, and An American in Paris. She received an Academy Award nomination for her performance in Robert Wise's Executive Suite. In 1965, Nina Fosh arrived here at USC to begin teaching directing, and I was lucky enough to get into one of her first classes. Even as she continued acting in film and television, 
Nina's passion for teaching lasted for over 40 years. Her course was immensely popular because she developed her own unique style, drawing on her experiences studying with Lee Strasberg, Stella Adler, and Uta Hagen, and being directed by such icons as Vincent Minnelli, Stanley Kubrick, Cecil B. DeMille, and Otto Preminger. As I began directing, the tremendous value of her teachings became evident and how important it was to preserve them for future generations. We became close friends and at a cinema department event we ran into my former classmate George Lucas who invited us up to Skywalker Ranch where we discussed creating a DVD of her course. He agreed to finance it and on January 10th, 2002, we began taping an entire semester using a crew of USC film students. We filmed for eight hours a week for 15 weeks and this is the result. Okay, so what are we going to do this semester? Live from Hollywood, this is Actor Z's Chat. I'm Kurt Kelly with Adila Barnes, who has her own bookstore on her website. <laughs> um, you do a lot of prolific work and help writers. What's your workshop about? I have different workshops. I have one that's called Jumping into the Deep Waters. Where and it's not about swimming, I'm having No, it's not okay. about swimming. And actors or writers are able to... These are um, your workshops. Yes. And writers are able to share their personal stories that they may want to develop uh, for a one-person show. Any or types of stories, stories or out. genre? All kinds of stories. Okay. Um, personal stories that have to do with their lives, whatever it is that they want to really write about. But if someone came to you and said, I have this series idea or this film idea, I need help writing and develop it, would you also help that's in that me. area? No, that's I, not you. That's not my go area. See those they need to go there. see those people you over there. You are a teacher, though. I am a teacher. Professor, and, um, if you will. I'm not a professor, but I'm an acting instructor and mm -hmm. uh, private coach. I've worked with a lot of people, all the way from beginning actors to those that are well established to those who are celebrities who want to cross over. And, um, you know, so over the years I've worked with those from five years old to 80s probably. And some who should be five are eight. No, never mind. <laughs> um, now you're also a talk show host. I'm a talk show host. I have a show on BlakeRadio.com. Mm -hmm. And the name of the show is my name. It's Adila. And so people so can that check out BlakeRadio.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're a culinary expert? You know, actually I'm a vegan and I love cooking. Really? I love cooking. I'm a vegan. I've been a vegan maybe for about seven years. I just did a, s a screen read for Mad Cowboy, which is all about veganism. Wow, that's interesting. So, yeah. I haven't had red meat in probably about 38 years. And really? It's been about seven years. Now, what was the turning point for you on that? Because some people In terms like of being a vegan? Yeah. Or well, I went on this 21-day um, cleanse, mm -hmm. and it was a vegan cleanse. And part of it was we got to see all these different um, documentaries on how they treat animals, how they raise them, what have you. And um, when I saw the documentaries, I literally got sick. And after it was over, the 21 days, I said, I'll never, ever go back to meat again, ever. So are you fully vegan or will you try fully fish? Vegan. So fully vegan. You don't vegan. do anything. Fully vegan. Okay. Fully fledged. Nice. I, I juice and green drink. I've started oh, doing that wonderful. more often, and I grow my own garden. What wonderful. don't you do? I'm, 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 everything we've touched, are you also an artist? No, not a visual artist, although my son is. He's very good. Okay. He's very good. I don't draw a straight line, but... Um, <laughs> There's something to be said for There's that, though. Sometimes it doesn't need to be a straight line. That's we have right. a question from an actor's each other, Yes, uh, we have a question is... How do you get your protein? How do you make sure that you're getting the right nutrients? Is there a particular vegan diet that you f uh, follow? And someone wanted to know, is one of those movies that you saw, Food, Inc.? No, I didn't see Food, Inc. That wasn't that even around one. 38 years ago, was it? Well, it was only about seven years ago that I became a vegan, so it okay. may have been around then. Uh, but in answer to the question about protein, I get my protein from my soy, from beans, uh, from nuts, mm -hmm. uh, quinoa is a very good source of protein, and um, so, you know, I, I have alternate routes in terms of making sure that I get what I need. I'm not an expert on it, certainly not as advanced as you are, but isn't there even proteins in certain vegetables? Yes, there is. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking broccoli for some reason, I don't know why, but... Oh, I'm not sure about that. Okay. But there are a lot of sources, so right. one does not have to have meat in order to get protein. 
Let's take a look at your website and what is okay. the actual URL where people can go to it and read more okay. about you and buy your book? Yes, and they can jot me an email and I will answer. Whoever sends You personally me, answer? I will personally answer. Oh, very nice. So, and I want to know who's out there and yeah. who's listening. So it's www.adila, A-D-I-L-A-H, Barnes, B-A-R-N-E-S, dot mm -hmm. com, as we see there. And here you're also on Facebook? I'm on Facebook Do you as take well. new friends or? I do. Okay. I do. And don't forget to Twitter you. Yes. And your Twitter handle will be? I'm not sure what my Twitter handle is. <laughs> At Adila Barnes. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, there we go. I and have people that kind of handle Here's these your IMDb for me. page. Yes. Um, which has just endless credits going oh, on in television, wow. film. And, Thank you. And here is the Los oh, Angeles yeah. Women's Theater Festival. And we've got wonderful things coming up. So, again, August 23rd, Empowerment Day. Submissions, we're taking them from all over the world. We've had artists from as far away as uh, England, Brazil, Russia, Canada, India, you name it. And the last site we saw was about the, the writers. The writers well, and right. that's in Georgia. And we're always open uh, to writers coming to visit year-round. All they have to do is say, I want to come and write, and we'll work out a time for them to come. Very nice. And you can find me at KurtKelly.com as well as on IMDb and numerous pages on Facebook. Yes, um, numerous. So just true. start scrolling and searching. You'll find us. And at Kurt Kelly or at Live Video Inc. Um, on the internet. And it's always a pleasure to work with Pepper J. And here's something special we'd like you to take a look at about Actors Eat Chat. Hi, I'm Alexis Nichols, one of your Actors Entertainment hosts. Here's a big hug and thank you for joining us on Actors Eat Chat. We are now almost 6 million viewers and chatter strong from all over the world, and we really appreciate you. Actor Z Chat shoots live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Time from the Pepper J Production Studio below the Hollywood sign in Hollywood, California. Want to see all of today's episode or any other of our other episodes? Please visit ActorsEntertainment.com and put the talent's name in the search box. And go ahead and visit Actors Entertainment on IMDb.com. That's the Internet Movie Database to see more than 1,200 entertainment industry professionals who have been guests on Actors eChat. And social media is so important, so follow Actors Entertainment on Twitter. Our handle is at Actors Entertain. And join us on Facebook at Actors Entertainment Fan Page. And don't forget to like us. Those likes really help out. Stay tuned for our Actors Reporter Animation, which won Best Animation at the Telly Awards. Great job in Now Media and Pepper J Productions, and terrific singing by Melissa Suzanne. And now, a special thank you to today's guest. Oh. And don't forget to like each of the pages you just saw there. I know. There'll be a test later. I'm Kurt <laughs> Kelly and Adila. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Adela thank Barnes. you for having me. This is Actors Eat Chat Live from Hollywood. Don't forget to join us for our next show. We'll be back soon. Have a great day. See ya. What's that? Actors Eat Chat Show? Happens to be my favorite in the morning. I want nothing but a cup of coffee, a bottle of Kahlua, six naked girl. Wait, no, that's not right. Actors Eat Chat Show. Oh my gosh, hey big Hollywood starlet that just happens to be walking by. Yes? I'm not from around here, but I want to be an actress just like you. What do I need to know? <gasps> Kid, let me tell you. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a naive newbie like you, there's one thing you need to know to get my first job. I lived in a slum, beat out 50 other girls to play a drunk bum. I cried. My first agent charged me 30%. Thanks. Working three jobs and I couldn't pay rent. But I'm an actor. She's an actor. A shark nod my leg on a B film in Sydney. To pay for the stitches, I sold my left kidney. I finally made a union. Their rules were complex. Their piles of paperwork fogged up my specs. But I'm an actor. She's an actor. I'm an actor. Well, that's rather disturbing. But what's the one thing I need to know? Don't listen to the critics. Don't follow all the tabs. Forget that sleazy photog. 
than the agent that's got cramps. Go to Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors Learn the tricks and the secrets without all the sweat. An info packed one stop shop. It's free and on the net. How can they help her? Career cues, union news, makeup woes, advice from pros, insurance tips, choosing scripts, everything at your fingertips. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Dad, call. I just got a call back. Actor Z live chat show. I'm just one of your Actor Z hosts, but as you can see, I'm also the Actor Z live video editor, which means that I'm here even when you don't see me. Actor Z is here to chat with you Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, or Hollywood Time as I like to call it. Our guests include actors, directors, producers, writers, singers, comics, and others that are all in the entertainment industry. You can see previous shows at www.actorsentertainment.com and be sure to check out our guest index to find your favorite celebrities. See you next time. I'm working.